Hello and welcome to episode 2 of News Around the Halo. Spring training is right around the corner and I'm here to break down the Angels' moves and some spring superlatives. Just a reminder, it is one day until pitchers and catchers report, so keep your eyes out for that. Also, the countdown for the spring training first game has begun as the Angels will face the Giants on March 2nd, 2016. As stated in a recent episode, the Angels have a lot of pitching options. Jared Weaver and C.J. Wilson are the veterans on the team, as Garrett Richards and Andrew Heaney, who both had solid seasons last year, also are in the mix. It seems like Hector Santiago, Tyler Skaggs, Nick Tropiano, and Matt Shoemaker will battle for the final spot in the rotation. One thing to keep your eyes out for is Tyler Skaggs' recovery. He had Tommy John in 2014, late season, so we could see him in the rotation, or he might have to start the season in AAA, due to the Angels' abundance of pitchers. The Angels seemingly have five spots filled right now in their bullpen, with Houston Street, Joe Smith, Jose Alvarez, Mike Morin, and Fernando Salas. But, that leaves two spots open, which could be filled by Diaz Guerra, the new additions, or some starting pitchers. Now, I present the first ever Angels Minor Moves category. The Angels had a little bit of action recently. First of all, getting Christian Federich from the Colorado Rockies. Left-hander could bring some balance into an Angels bullpen that is mainly right-handers. Although he struggled to a tune of a 5-plus ERA last season, he could bounce back in the Angels bullpen and provide some important stability. Also, keep in mind that he struggled in the worst pitcher's park in the major leagues at Coors Field. But with him added, the Angels had to make a corresponding move, losing one of their middle infielders from last season. Taylor Featherston, middle infielder who was selected in the Rule 5 draft a year ago, was pretty subpar offensively for the Angels. Although his glove and speed made him somewhat of an asset, he was not great on the hitting side of things. With veteran infielder Cliff Pennington joining the team, his role was diminished and probably wouldn't have a spot on the Major League roster. Following designating Taylor Featherston for assignment, the Angels traded him to Philadelphia for cash. With the Phillies' lack of depth and lack of talent, Taylor Featherston will probably get a lot of playing time. I could see him in the role that he was with the Angels a year ago with the Phillies. The Angels also signed Javi Guerra to a minor league deal with an invite to spring training. Guerra has a career 287 ERA in 146 games, but just served a 50-game suspension for drug abuse in 2015. This could be one of two things. One, he could be effective in the bullpen, or two, they'll probably just designate him in a few days. It'll be interesting to see how the Angels' bullpen shakes up, and if Javi Guerra or Christian Federich could make any impact. Overall, if you're expecting the next Houston Street or Joe Smith, you're probably going to be disappointed. These two guys I could see being there for strictly depth purposes. But who knows, every year there's a diamond in the rough, and I don't know, anything can happen. So that basically sums it up for the Angels' new additions, even though they're really minor. Now I have a new segment for the show. I call it Spring Superlatives. Based on last season's performance off the field and on the field, I will be giving the Angels some player titles. I could do this a few times this year, but this one will be just before spring training. Without further ado, here are the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim pre-spring superlatives. Here we go. First of all, a fan favorite and possibly the most underrated player on the Angels, Cole Calhoun. With Garrett Richards, Albert Pujols, and Mike Trout getting most of the spotlight, Calhoun is working in the back, and he's doing very well. Calhoun provides solid speed, solid hitting, great power, and most of all, a fantastic glove that earned him a gold glove. The second superlative, and probably the most obvious, Mike Trout is probably the best on the team, and the most likely to be in the All-Star game, or an MVP. Since bursting on the scene a few years ago, Mike Trout has probably been the best player in the MLB. He won the 2014 MVP award, and many thought that he should have won before, 
and after that season. Third, the most likely to get the call to the hall is Albert Pujols. Although the hitting tool has diminished, Albert Pujols is probably one of the better hit players that we'll see in this generation. His time with St. Louis was fantastic, and with the Angels he's had a few productive seasons. Although Mike Trout might be the best on the team, Albert Pujols is a solid contributor and his past career should make him a Hall of Famer. Fourth superlative goes to Garrett Richards, who is the nastiest pitcher on the Angels. If you want to step in the batter's box against Garrett Richards, raise your hand. If you're raising your hand right now, you're probably a liar. When he's going in out of the starting gate with a 90 plus mile per hour fastball, you know you're in trouble. The next superlative goes to Andrew Heaney, who is the best 2014-2015 acquisition. Heaney was acquired last December from the Los Angeles Dodgers, who acquired him in a three-team trade that sent D. Gordon away. The Angels gave up Howie Kendrick in the deal. He looks like he'll be a solid left-hander in the Angels' rotation, who is very consistent for many years to come. Next up is the energetic second baseman, Johnny Giovatella. Giovatella brings a lot to the field, but what he mostly brings is a boomer bust potential and a lot of energy. The second baseman hustles on the field and gives the Angels fans a lot to root for. But his past experience with Kansas City could show that he could be a flop soon. Next, the most promising player, or the person who could really have the most potential on the team, is Mike Morin. The right-hander was great in 2014, but took a step back in the 2015 campaign. If the right-hander could regain his 2014 form, he could be one of the better Angels relievers and helm the 7th inning. On the topic of relievers, the best one in the 2015 season was Houston Street. Although he blew some saves later in the season in 2015, Houston Street could be one of the best again this year. His track record with the Padres and the Angels is very impressive, and he could be one of the better players on the team. He can't do it alone though, and that's why I chose the most consistent reliever to be, Joe Smith. The right-hander, who is in the final year of his three-year, $15 million contract, has been great for the Angels in the 8th inning. Although he's close some games, he best fits in the 8th inning. He, like Street, is approaching his mid-30s, but is still a great reliever. Now, let's do the worst of the worst. The franchise destroyer himself, Josh Hamilton. The slugging outfielder really messed up the Angels as they gave him a huge financial commitment and a relapse and drug addiction kept him out of the games and made the Angels have to eat up his contract and send him to the Texas Rangers. This year, in fact, he'll be paid more than Mike Trout, Andrew Heaney, and Garrett Richards combined. And he's not even on the team. His large contract that the Angels are still paying for has made Arte Moreno reluctant to sign a left fielder, which has really hurt the Angels this offseason. Thanks a lot, Josh. Just talking about him makes me really mad, so I'm going to change the subject. That about wraps it up for the Angels pre-spring superlatives. If you have any suggestions for the next one, please comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching as always, and please like, comment, subscribe, and share to a friend or family. I've changed the format of posting a little bit, so I'll talk about it here. Instead of posting every Sunday at 5 o'clock, I'm going to be posting whenever I can because I believe in quality over quantity. But you can still expect 2-3 to three posts per month talking about the Angels, especially when the season comes close and the summer hits. I have already started the first part of episode 3, so expect to see that before the month ends. Also, please bear with me as I change the format of the show and add a little bit and subtract a little bit. If you have any topic ideas, please comment below or tweet me at NoahLines01 or at NBaseballNews. If you comment, you could be featured on the show. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next week. Peace.